What's happening everybody? I am James Arts and today I have something slightly different for you because today, or rather a few days ago by the time I post this, marks a very special day in LEGO Star Wars history. Today we will be reviewing the 2017 Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon. A pre-review if you like. First of all, we'll have to take a look at the details of this set. So all of this comes provided to the public by Brickset. So this is set 75192 Millennium Falcon and is part of the Ultimate Collector Series sub theme. This 2017 version contains 7,541 pieces, which is more than 2,000 more than the original from 2007, set 10179, which contained a meagre infinitesimal 5,197 pieces, making this the largest and also most expensive Lego set to date, retailing at a whopping £650. That is a lot. Without further ado, let's get into this. So, the first image we have here from Brickset is a top-down image of the function, um, showing the stunningly accurate shaping and all the impressive detail on the exterior of the ship. Immediately, we notice the inclusions of more greens and tan colours than the original, which gives the ship more depth and a realistic feel. The proportions of this thing are almost inch perfect compared to the shapes of falcons we've been getting since 2004, which aren't the best. Next, we see the rear of the ship highlighted with the blue colouring from the box art of the engines. Uh, we also see the wonderful detailing and greebling of the aft section and the six exhaust ports. This build has a much smoother, more fluid, and less angular feel than the 2007 version, but then again that did come out ten years ago, and this set has loads of new and interesting pieces. Here we see the front mandibles of the ship, um, with excellent greebling down the sides. You may also notice the omission of the sensor dish in this image for reasons which will become apparent in a moment. The landing gear on this thing look good, but I feel they could still have been done better. Something just doesn't sit right with them for me. I'm not quite sure what it is. And at last, we finally get a good look at the new cockpit pieces for this 2017 set. This is wildly different to the 2007 version, which had a fully brick-built cockpit. Now, I know many people disliked that and thought it looked ugly, but I think I preferred the look of that to the new design. I think it felt more like a UCS design rather than just a larger version of the standard cockpit we get with the standard set. And although this is probably more accurate and less fiddly, I would, I would have liked to see a brick-built cockpit return. The boarding ramp design is very similar to that of the 2007 version, with the ring above it not being. That is wildly different. No more angled roof tiles. No, 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 no. Now we get specialised flat quarter circle tiles. Yeah, try saying that very quickly. And rounded bricks to give it a more authentic feel. In this image of the ship, we see the designer of the ship, Hans Bacard Schlermer, um, demonstrating the true immense size of this thing and the underside of the ship. Now, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed, a little underwhelmed with the underside. There's a lot less detail and far too many studs showing for my liking. I mean, at least try and keep it so that there's a, as much detail on the bottom as there is on the top. It just looks unfinished, in my opinion. I don't know, leave, leave your thoughts below. And again, the landing gear, it just doesn't quite sit right with me. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Now, this feature... This has been rumoured for years, since the first leaks that we may, might be getting a UCS Millennium Falcon came out. That we will have interchangeable sensor dishes, allowing you to switch between original trilogy and Force Awakens designs of the Falcon. Personally, that doesn't really do much for me, as I'm probably just going to leave the circular dish on, because Empire Strikes Back will always be the greatest Star Wars film. Fight me! But I know loads of people out there really love the Force Awakens, and would want to recreate the Falcon in its new image. It's a nice feature that I'm probably not going to use very much. And if we move this over 
here. Um, I'll be able to show you the box art, which demonstrates the change between the original trilogy and The Force Awakens. Look at that 4K resolution. They also have these small additions, which clip to the front of the mandibles here as part of The Force Awakens design. I must admit, I would never even have noticed there was anything different. But I guess that's a nice detail and piece of continuity fan service. Okay, so now we come to the minifig selection. Um, I'm a little disappointed, to be honest. The set comes with eight, quotation marks, minifigures, which is more than the five that came with the original, but for a £650 set, that's minimalistic. For a set of this price, I would have expected more minifigures, and also a more interesting selection of minifigures. The Death Star that came out, that was re-released recently for two to three hundred pounds, had 24 minifigures. That's a lot of minifigures. I mean, okay, I, can, I know this would never have that many. I'm not an idiot. Well, but eight minifigures and none of them really being very interesting, they need something to do it. Justice. Otherwise people won't buy this set. So we get a slightly updated unique Han Solo, shown here from The Empire Strikes Back, who has an alternate face with a breathing mask, but nothing very special. We have a new General Leia, um, Hoth minifigure, which I think has a new torso and leg printing, again with a breathing mask as an alternate face. Again, nothing very special, really. The same old Chewbacca we've been getting since 2014, no new updates, which for a set of this calibre is quite a sad story, really. We have C-3PO, nothing special, no arm or leg printing like the Special Edition Force Awakens minifig that came out a while ago, nothing special at all, it's, been, it's the same one we've been getting since about 2012. And last but not least for the original trilogy we also have a Minoc, which is one of those bat-like creatures which lives inside the giant space slug thing. Yeah, that's kind of a cool build actually. Up next we have the Force Awakens minifigures. And we begin with the same old Han Solo we've got the last couple of years. The same Ray. Although I do think that's a new blaster in a new silver colour, which is kind of cool. We get the same Finn. Even though, this is going to get confusing, at the time of this video, the, he, the new version will come out after the video I am making, but will have already come out by the time this video goes live, um, for a set that's coming out after the Last Jedi sets, which has the new minifigure in, and this is an old minifigure. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I would have liked to have seen a new minifigure for it, basically. Um, that's a little bit disappointing. And last of all, for The Force Awakens, we have BB-8, who hasn't changed one bit. Um, and we also get two small porgs, which are supposed to look like this. Meh. Nah. So I really would have liked to see some better figs with this, maybe an old Luke and young Luke, or some stormtroopers as well to act out some little battle scenes or whatever. But yeah, I feel this minifigure selection is rather underwhelming for the price of this set. And here we see our first image of the interior, which is the main commune area with the Dejaric hollow chessboard thing. Uh, the navigation computer there on the right, and also some nice stickers for details on the seats. It's also great to have an interior, which of course the original didn't have, um, even if the areas are quite small due to functionality and build quality and other factors. We have a small hallway here with escape pods on the right, which do open up and can fit a minifigure in. We get a small bay here um, with a Great in the floor in which Ray and Finn hide themselves in The Force Awakens. We also get some cool printing and stickers to show depth of the corridor there on the left and sort of false perspective. That's quite a nice inclusion. And finally, if we remove this top section here, thus, <laughs> we have space for two minifigures to fit inside the gun emplacement, just like in the 2007 version. Now, if we bring that top section back there, you can see that that Technic strip in the bottom there will simply drop down into that hole and lock into place. A nice addition. The 
box looks cool. I like it. I like the black cover theme with the blueprints design. And the photos on of the ship on the box, they look absolutely stellar. I'll just show you the uh, play features shown on the back of the box then. There's certainly a lot more of them than there was with the original. Again, look at that 4K resolution. Um, and I can, I can only assume that the text on the side of the box is a sort of intro to the set and its designer. This guy, maybe? I guess that's probably what it is. Um, so, the verdict. Well, the ship looks absolutely fabulous and has incredible amounts of detail thrown in. However, I think that the lack of any really good minifigures does detract away from the selling point of this set. Also, I think even for a set that has over 7,500 pieces, £650 for a Lego set is extortionate and far too much money. Especially when you bear in mind that the original cost less in the first place and will always sell for more, seeing as it's the original. Basically what I'm trying to say is this won't hold its value as well as the original. So, will I get it? No, I probably won't. However nice it looks and however much I yearn for it, I just can't justify spending that sort of money on a Lego set. I'm 16, I've never spent £650 on one thing in my life. I just couldn't. I just couldn't pay that. That's too much. But anyway, that's my opinion. I would love to know your thoughts on the UCS Falcon in the comments below. Um, and I, I do always read your comments and I should reply. Um, you can check out my latest video here on the right um, or a playlist of my Micro Mock series here on the left. If you like what you see here, press the orb in the middle to subscribe. And don't forget to check out my Flickr page uh, to see photos of all my micro mocks that are not up on my channel yet. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.